Hello, everyone. On behalf of the University of St. Thomas, welcome to today's webinar with our presenter, Jennifer Rogers, Associate Director of Employer Relations at the Career Development Center here at the university. Jennifer, take it away. Thanks. Thanks so much, Jacob. I want to thank the Alumni Engagement Office for the invitation uh, for me to come and talk to you about uh, the beginning of 2019 and your ability to set some career goals for yourself. So I've, I've titled this, Are You Managing Your Career? Uh, probably what you should know about me first is that I've been employed here at the University of St. Thomas in the Career Development Center for about 16 years. Uh, my role is Associate Director of Employer Relations, uh, and I also am a career counselor in the Career Center. Simply put, my job is to connect students and alumni with employers, and I do that in a wide variety of ways. Let's talk a little bit about this webinar. What we're going to do in this time together is we're going to actually hopefully help you take the pulse of where you are in your current work situation. We'll look at exactly where you are. We'll talk about maybe have you think about where you'd like to go. And we'll also talk about how you might want to get there. So the first thing to think about is what your goals are at this moment of your life. How do you maximize your productivity? How do you want to learn and grow professionally? How could you increase some specific skill sets? And really, how would you position yourself for a raise or a promotion? In short, we hope that what you want to do is set yourself up for career fulfillment, right? Maybe you want to be seen as more valuable to your employer. Maybe you want to add to your own personal feelings of self-worth, right? So by doing all of these things, um, this is what professionals in my field of career development refer to as the career management phase of life. It's when you're ready to look at all of these things, your productivity, your growth, the um, uh, facilitation of new skills, and positioning yourself for what comes next. And so this is a colorful picture, actually, of the career development model that we work with. Uh, the yellow section of the wheel you're looking at is what I'm talking about. This is what we call that career development phase. Uh, you'll notice that this is in a circular form, which means that most people actually move in and through all of these four different phases, probably multiple times in their lifetime. And as a matter of fact, in this particular uh, webinar, I'm actually going to probably be referring to the red section of our career development model as well, which we refer to as the self-examination part. Uh, but right now, I'll be touching on the yellow career management phase. I may not use every single terminology that you see here, but we're going to cover all of the concepts. And you'll see at the bottom of your screen uh, the URL to this particular web page. You can get to it from our homepage here. So here I've been talking to people in their um, job search and career search for many, many years. And I've found that there often are two different types of people who uh, talk to me about how they landed their job. So either it was kind of happenstance and you fell into it. Uh, maybe you took advantage of an opportunity or a specific connection and you thought, well, I'll take this job and we'll see where this takes me. driven by wind. Or some of you may have been very planful. Your job search was really targeted uh, and your decision to take this specific job was strategic. And you were thinking, okay, if I go here, then it's going to set me up for my next move. And then this will enable me to learn these things. And this will get me where I want to go next in my career planning and my career goals. So I have a chessboard, right? You're being planful and strategic. What I want you to know is that there is no one right or wrong way to be. So it really, regardless of how you have obtained your, uh, your position, everybody can benefit from the self-examination. You're going to chart your course. You're going to evaluate where you are now. So what we need you to do is think about the following things. You're ready to evaluate many different parts of your life. You're going to steer your course and you're going to, we're going to move on here. 
we're going to evaluate a lot of things. I suggest that you ask yourself the following questions. Are you interested in the work you're doing? Are you interested in the industry or the specific sector that you find yourself in? Are you using the skills that you have? Are you using the skills that you enjoy most? Are you being effective in your work? Are you comfortable with the organizational culture? Is this a good fit for you? Is the work you're doing uh, with enjoyable coworkers? Do you have a supportive supervisor? And are you employed within basically a career and an organization that honors your work values and your personal value system? And ideally, you're in a position to have a life outside of work as well. So this is what I'm suggesting you start with in terms of your self-evaluation. Ask yourself these questions. So I'm a dog lover and my next slide kind of goes into the now what. So if you've asked yourself some of these questions, many of you are gonna be in different places. So the first image of our, our shepherd friends, some of you are gonna just decide, I'm gonna stay right where I am because I've decided this is a good job, this is a good employer, and you're gonna do the sit and stay thing. Others of you are gonna to wanna to maybe, hmm, I want to do a little bit more. I want to increase my skills and, and learn more. Some of you may come to the conclusion that it's time maybe for a different position. You want to move on. Maybe that position is going to be in the same organization, or maybe you'd like to move out into a different employer, or maybe you'd like to move on to a completely different career field altogether. This really might be the winning strategy for you at this point. In short, what are your goals? Where you are now, is this good or would you like to upgrade? So I'm gonna move forward into what I call career maintenance basics. Some of you are gonna say, all right, I'm pretty good. I'm just starting out in my career. You know, maybe I just graduated within the last few years. So here's a couple of suggestions and, and you probably are already doing this. I kinda wanna give myself a disclaimer here and that I may not be revealing earth-shattering news to you. This is stuff you've probably already thought about, and I'm just going to reinforce what you've been thinking about. So the first one says, stay current on trends and skills, right? That's what's happening. Your career field, your industry, your employer type, it's changing all the time, so keep your skills current. And how might you do that? Well, first of all, read. Read trade papers, read related journals, read web resources, read LinkedIn articles, read anything you can get your hands on, again, to keep you updated with what's going on. Two, you could identify and engage with professional or organizations, and hopefully you probably are doing that already. There's a professional association for every single job or career field you can find. Three, another way you could do this is, of course, attend things, attend conferences, meetings, trainings, webinars anything to um, put yourself out there to learn and grow and keep up to date. The second thing that I recommend is, of course, that you should maintain and develop your network. I consider this a basic. And how would you be doing this? Well, you could make sure you're visible, engaged at work. Maybe it's being social. Maybe it's making sure you show up for things and meetings so that people know who you are and you get to know them. Two, you could follow up with and make sure you keep in contact with all the professionals you meet. Again, hopefully you're not just insular and you're not, maybe you're not just inside of your office all the time, you're out and about meeting professionals. Engage with people on LinkedIn, uh, whether they're uh, somebody that is a coworker of yours or whether these are professionals that you're meeting out and about, ask to connect with them on LinkedIn. And then once you're connected, engage. So a third suggestion might be, just be curious, right? Talk to people. Ask the people around you questions about their work history, their work life, their education, their career field. How did they get where they are today? Uh, and especially if you're traveling outside of your own employer organization, ask other people about their employer and what it's like to work there. Ask them to tell you about their industry and what the trends are within their industry. These are all things that you could be doing. So again, we'll do the basics. You're going to stay current, stay up to date on the trends and the skills that you need to do your work well, and you're going to continue to grow and develop your network. Those are the basics. 
moving on, maybe it's time you've decided to move forward, to upgrade, so to speak. Uh, so I've got a few suggestions here on the screen. And again, you may hopefully have already been doing a lot of these things. Number one, find a mentor. Sometimes your mentors are going to come from inside your organization, and sometimes you might meet them outside of your employer. These mentors are really important, right? They can help you be strategic in planning your career goals or help you maneuver the internal politics. They might be able to introduce you to important people and, of course, give you some really good advice. Once you find a mentor, be sure to connect with them on a regular basis. The second thing, it says join and lead. So that takes different, um, different forms within your organization. Maybe you've got committees within your organization you could join. Uh, maybe you could offer to take on leadership roles in various areas. Again, thinking both inside your organization and externally. Third suggestion here says ask for more. Maybe it's just simply asking for more high level projects. Maybe you are ready for management and, and there's an opportunity for management training. Uh, again, talk to your supervisor about things like this. Uh, the fourth suggestion here says, demonstrate that you are a knowledge expert. Do you have an ex enough expertise to be seen by others as a knowledge expert? So could you be the one doing the presentations at the meetings, uh, doing conference workshops? Could you be leading the trainings? Can you write blog posts on your field? Uh, can you be posting things on LinkedIn? All of these are things that will just minimally help you continue to move forward, which leads us to your goals. So all these things I've suggested can be included within your annual goals because they're developmental in nature, right? So you should be incorporating these career, both career maintenance and the moving forward goals um, within in your, your organization. And you should be, hopefully, talking to your supervisor on a regular basis about what it is you'd like to be doing and how you'd like to grow. So you could get their support for all of this and they can help you. My next slide actually brings us to maybe the opposite of the continuum. <laughs> uh, how bad is it? For some of you, hopefully not, but for some of you out there, you might be in a current position where this isn't the right place for you. Uh, and so I would ask you to think, are your work values really being met at this point in your life? Well, in order to answer that question, you have to go back to that self-evaluation phase. Do you ever dread going to work? Do you ever feel frustrated? Do you ever feel inadequate? If you do, pay attention to these particular moments when you have these feelings. What's going on? What are you doing? In other words, what tasks are you engaged in? What activities are you engaged in? And most importantly, what skills are you employing when you have these feelings of frustration? It could be that you might feel like you're a square peg being forced into a round hole because the, the work that you're doing is maybe not coming naturally and you'd want to use your natural gifts, right? Again, it's that, do you feel like you're a square peg being into a, forced into a round hole. And what does this really tell you about your preferences with regards to your tasks and your work environment? You're at a point where you can assess if this is a good fit for you at this point in your life. <laughs> I like that image. I read a monster.com article. It was called Five Negative Thoughts That Are Guaranteed to Sabotage Your Career Path. <laughs> it offered some suggestions though, and I'm gonna just share with you one of them. It says, grab some time with a trusted friend or a mentor, or even maybe your supervisor. Talk about your feelings of frustration with somebody else. It really helps to discuss this, these problems out loud, these thoughts out loud. Sometimes we just lose perspective when we're inside of our own head. And of course, getting an objective person's perspective can help us see things that maybe we otherwise couldn't. And finally, if you're feeling stalled at work and you can't figure out why, Maybe it's time to turn your energy inward. So for example, think, are you avoiding taking risks because maybe you have a lack of confidence? So some self-introspection and, and honesty might really help at this point. So what I would say is now's the time to be strategic. Uh, so let's think about the first, first item here in the slide. Is it possible 
Or is it time for you to try to redesign your current role? Or maybe it's time to take on a different position internally within your organization. Who knows? I also have in here, update your resume. And I really think this is a good idea. Some of you might be updating it every six months, but for sure annually update your resume and certainly update your LinkedIn profile, right? They go hand in hand. Uh, and besides, you won't forget as much. Um, it also says read job postings and job descriptions. These might actually give you some ideas, especially if you're ready for the next thing in your career, looking at other job descriptions of aspirational positions or similar positions can help give you ammunition for either redesigning your current role or it gives you something to shoot for, right? Gives you ideas. So these are all things that you possibly could, be do, could do to be strategic and be ready for the next thing. What I'm here to tell you is the Career Center actually is ready to help you. So what I have on this last screen is a list of common resources that we offer. The first thing I put here is uh, an online self-assessment inventory. If you're especially one of those people that's ready to kind of start all over again and reassess where you are, we have something called Pathway U. It includes four assessments within it, interests, personality, work values, and workplace preferences. It only takes 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, alumni can access this resource by logging into our Tommy Careers site and our system. Uh, if you don't happen to have a current username and password for Tommy Careers, don't worry, there's gonna be a link on our website to request one. And we also recommend that you can make an appointment with a career staff member to discuss whatever results you get from that particular um, career assessment. The second thing on our, our slides is job posting. So again, if you are in the market to kind of start a job search, just know that we have job postings. Yes, most of them might be entry level, but we definitely have employers that are posting experience level positions as well. I mentioned here online resources. Uh, if you go to the Career Center homepage, you'll see that there is um, on the right hand side, I think the third link says career resources. Check it out. It's got basically a tab on every single career topic you could ever need. Uh, and it's got um, online links for you, um, access to our PDFs of documents, webinars, things like that. The next thing on our list says seminars and events page. That's also right, I think, above the career resources section on our homepage. Um, and what I want you to know about that is that while we're not just uh, posting events that are happening on campus, but if we find out about job fairs, whether they're virtual or live, or other kinds of job search or employer events that would be helpful to anybody off campus, we will make sure to list those as well. So we want to draw your attention to that. And finally, it says appointments. Uh, so just know that there are wonderful people in the Career Development Center that are ready and willing to help talk to you about your career change or your job change. Maybe it's just as simple as advice on updating your resume. Uh, so we can talk to you certainly in person, but over the phone. If you're not local, we can do this over the phone. We could even do video, Skype related or Zoom related kinds of meetings as well. Uh, what you see at the bottom of your screen is the URL to our uh, website. So make a note of that. You'll also see next to that uh, our telephone number. And we invite you to call that to make the appointments and just let them know that you're an alumni. So thanks. I, I hope this has been helpful. We kind of talked uh, in brief about uh, helping you assess where you are right now in your career, uh, maybe giving you some ideas about ways that you can maintain that career maintenance phase, but also ways to enhance and upgrade yourself in your career. And also talked a little bit about uh, helping you assess whether maybe you'd like a bigger change at this moment of your life and what you should be thinking about and some resources the Career Center has to offer you. So, hope that was helpful. Thanks very much. Yeah, thank you, Jennifer. That's excellent. Um, we got plenty of time here, so I really just wanna open it up to questions from the audience here. Um, you can submit any questions using the chat function on the uh, bottom of your screen or the Q&A function as well. Uh, so we'll get to as many as we can here since we have plenty of time. Uh, I want to start by going back to what you were saying about two types of people who kind of drift into certain jobs or are very planful. 
about their career management. Um, I think anyone really at different times in their career could be either of those things or you know, perhaps both at the same time. Um, can you talk a little bit more about um, what signs you can notice in your own situation to kind of figure out where you're at um, and move forward based on where you find yourself at a particular time? Where you are um, in terms of what you're ready for, in terms of how you want to conduct your next job search? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I, that's why I said that there's really no one right way or wrong way to go about uh, finding positions and careers. Um, the happenstance piece, there's actually a career development theory by Dr. John Crumboltz. It's called planned happenstance. Uh, and, and that's actually, like you said, so many people do that much of their life. And that's why I pointed out um, if you're just paying attention. I think when some students are in the midst of college or in their senior year, who knows, maybe a family friend or a family member identified a contact of theirs, introduced you to them, and one thing led to another, there happened to be a job opening, they interviewed you, and you went, oh, great, this is kind of falling in my lap, this is terrific, and you, and you take that job. Now, as you go forward in your career, those opportunities are still going to present themselves, but planned happenstance just means I am paying attention. Right, so when I show up at that professional association meeting, or when I show up at that young professionals chamber of commerce happy hour, I'm being aware of who I'm meeting, I'm collecting business cards, maybe I decide, ooh, that person's working in a really interesting place and I'd like to keep in touch with them. And then you actually do, whether it's through LinkedIn or email, and then that person just says to you, whatever, a month later, Hey, I just wanted to let you know there's an opening in my uh, office and you kind of expressed some interest in that last time we talked. So I thought I'd tip you off and let you know. Well, that also kind of fell in your lap. But again, you see the difference? It's kind of planned happenstance. You're paying attention and you're taking advantage of those opportunities as they arise. Nothing wrong with that. That's just terrific. And other people really still will be very, very planful and strategic about this is my next job move. This is where I want to go. Excellent. Um, we have a question here about mentorship, which is something I've personally heard about a lot recently. Uh, do you have recommendations on seeking out a mentor, uh, possibly a way of asking someone? Does it come organically uh, or uh, can you seek someone out and say, will you be my mentor? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I think that um, you're going to be best served by a professional, hopefully, that you have identified. Uh, again, maybe there's somebody a little higher up the chain within your own organization, or maybe it's um, just even somebody that has the same, in the same career field as you, but they don't work in the same employer organization. But maybe they have a lot of years of experience and you really respect their expertise. And you absolutely should actually ask somebody. Um, I'm really looking to, you could say, I'm really looking to further develop myself in my career and my profession. Uh, I really think I could benefit from some mentoring. And I'm just wondering if you might be willing to serve me in that role. Uh, you might want to clarify so they're not scared that you're not talking about a conversation or a meeting every single week. So you might want to tell them what kind of parameters you've set. Uh, in formal university networking uh, and mentoring programs, it's usually a once a month contact, but that's you. You get to control how often you need or want to be in touch with your mentor. Um, but absolutely you should reach out to them. You could also might, if they've never done this before and they've never been a mentor, you might suggest some specific activities that you two will engage in. Uh, I always say in-person meetings, right? Whether they're in a coffee shop, but eventually at some point, you really want to meet that mentor in their office, in their place of business. If it's certainly, especially outside of your employer organization, maybe it's lunch. And ideally, the two of you can maybe attend some professional development events together, uh, trainings, conferences, workshops, whatever those are. And they can then maybe introduce you around again to other people that might be helpful to you uh, and just give you some information. Am I answering the question? Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's great. Uh, next, I want to move to two kind of related questions here. Uh, the first one I'll ask, uh, is there a recommended amount of time you should stay in one job? Can you stay too long? 
personally, you know, listen to me. I just said that I've been at the University of St. Thomas. I'm in my 16th year. Uh, higher education is its own animal, I must say. But I never say that there's a way that you're too long in a profession. The only way that you're too long in a job is if you become stagnant. If you literally stop growing and stop developing your skills, stop learning new things. If there are no opportunities for you to go to additional trainings and feed yourself in, in developing new skills, then yeah, maybe it sounds like you've been too long in that organization. But there is no, again, one right way, wrong way. It could be one year for some people, could be 15 years for another person. That's what I'd say about that. Uh, the next one for similar, but for earlier in your career, um, what are some common mistakes people make when transitioning to their second job? Uh, situation where they've been in their first career job out of college and are ready to move on? I've never thought about common mistakes, um, but the I really focus on the positive. The first thing I really might think of, though, is to never burn bridges. So as you're transitioning and moving from one employer to the next, uh, I would hope that you be leaving behind some positive feelings and good relationships with your previous employers, uh, ideally with your supervisor, um, but certainly with other coworkers. That would be, I think, the first be careful kind of a thing uh, and make sure that you're on friendly terms, especially if you're uh, transitioning within the same industry and especially if you're transitioning within the same career field and profession. It really, really is a small world out there and you just never know who knows who. So one mistake would be if you burned a bridge and moved on with some negative hard feelings. Um, I'm trying to think of any other big mistakes that you can make. I, I guess I've seen some people, this is very minor, they've moved on to a new job and they forgot to update their LinkedIn profile. That is huge. Um, I actually just was on LinkedIn, was it earlier this week? And I was looking at somebody who I think made a transition within the last year somewhere. And we did, at least they put in, I think I've, I looked up, I've looked up many people on a constant basis. One person had their new employer and their new job title, but absolutely no information. So I had no details about the, what they were actually doing there. And then actually I did look up some other person who I know transitioned into a completely new company within the last year and they didn't even put the information on their LinkedIn profile at all. So that would be a mistake. <laughs> Okay, uh, again, we have two uh, questions here, kind of asking similar questions. Um, both people who are asking about uh, career changes, moving from an academic industry into uh, maybe the for-profit space. Um, what advice would you have for someone who has been in a particular industry for a long time and is looking to make a change to something completely different? The career changing aspect, especially if you're moving from one sector to another or one industry to another, you, I would say you're gonna benefit the most from for sure a couple of things, is identifying individuals within that new industry or that new profession and conducting information and advice interviews, right? So you are the interviewer, you're identifying professionals and whether it's taking them out to coffee or lunch or meeting with them whenever you can and really pumping them for information about this new, what's new to you and ask them, hopefully they've been in the field for quite a while and they can give you some good advice about the transition and what it might be like to work in that area of the good, the bad and the ugly, salary information, expectations, organizational culture, things like that that you can watch out for. Um, and secondly, I had mentioned before professional development events. I'd mentioned professional associations. There are professional groups uh, that really attend to every field and every industry. So if somebody's going to try to make a complete career field switch and transition, uh, then participating and maybe even becoming a member, but even participating in those professional groups and those meetings and conferences will give you a leg up and help you rub elbows with new people in that new profession and that new industry. Um, I was trying to think, um, you definitely might want to talk to a career counselor about a career shift and a career change. For some professions, maybe dipping your toe in the water to try to do something as a volunteer might be a way you're, to get your foot in the door depending on where you are. Can you talk a little bit more in depth about that? How do you go about deciding exactly what field might be a good 
fit for you? Is it just working with career counselors and people like that? Or are there other resources that um, people could consult? Sure. Um, when you're trying to make that determine about what my next field might be, what my next profession might be, the career counseling work, you know, that we do is really the very best because we give you individualized one-on-one -on -one attention. I did mention, of course, here uh, at the top of this, the last slide that I had, the assessment inventory called Pathway U, and that will probably suggest uh, specific job titles and professions that you may or may not have thought about uh, because it's going to have you assess where you are at this moment of your life. Uh, so assessments are really helpful. Some of them are free and online, but uh, if you really want to do that level of digging into who you are, again, I recommend that you work with an individual career counselor for that. Um, again, I'd say talking to professionals is going to really help you identify what the next thing is for you. Uh, I call it, when I say people are going to benefit the most from informational interviews, if you get to the point where you're having a conversation with somebody and they're describing, here's what I do, here's what I love about my work, here are all the skills I get to use, here are some frustrations, but here's what makes this a wonderful fit for me. If all of a sudden you feel like you're looking in a mirror and, and who you're talking to is a reflection of yourself, bingo, pay attention to that. That might be a field you really should think about. Well, that's excellent. Um, I had another interesting question here. Uh, it says, many organizations are downsizing or consolidating work and moving to smaller workforces. Uh, if you're a person who has absorbed a considerable, considerable amount of work that allowed staff uh, cost savings for a company, how do you effectively ask for or seek job role change or uh, additional compensation? Well, again, at one point in this, um, I think it was the previous slide, I had recommended uh, here in the last note was to look at other job descriptions. Uh, if what you're trying to do is maybe make the case for making an adjustment to your job description, which may make the case for a salary bump or something like that, uh, do your best. I, I know of organizations that have downsized, and the reason they're downsizing is they can't afford to pay people anymore, but you shouldn't, that doesn't mean you should not try. Uh, so again, if you can gather ammunition and finding evidence of here's what a job description might look like in my area, and you can bring that to your supervisor or their supervisor and say, here, this is what this looks like. And you can also get salary information online. Again, I don't have time right now to go into all the various resources you have to research salaries. Um, but when you meet with an individual career coach or career counselor, we will give you those resources of how to research uh, what would be a realistic salary for that particular type of role. Um, then again, you have evidence. Uh, you can't just say, I'm doing more work. You, I deserve more pay. You need to be a little bit more strategic than that and, and write everything down and say, but look, this is what these people are paying over here. And this is what this job looks like. That, does that help getting at you? Yeah. Um, once you submit an application uh, for a different job, uh, what steps can you take for following up, uh, especially when a potential employer isn't communicative about their job search? You don't know if they received your application, if you're still being considered. Um, what can you do in that interim after submitting an application and, and waiting to hear back? Well, there's a couple of things I might do if, you're, uh, if you've applied for a position and you want to make sure that you're following up. Um, it depends on the size of the employer, right, that you've sent your resume and your, your information into. Of course, the larger the corporation, the more difficult it is to make sure that you know exactly who you're going to follow up with. Uh, in those cases, I really would recommend utilizing LinkedIn. Uh, doing the searches through there, you can do keyword searches by the name of the employer organization and maybe think of a common job title. Are you trying to get in touch with a recruiter or would their name be talent acquisition? Try to identify a job title, do a keyword search. 
The other thing that we can certainly coach you with um, is trying to identify alumni that might be working within that organization. Uh, there's a couple ways you can do that, certainly through the LinkedIn alumni tool. Again, our career coaches can help you with that. And of course, the Alumni Engagement Office has the new St. Thomas Connect tool. And that is another way for you to connect with alumni. And finally, on a more individual basis, if you're applying for a little smaller organization, the old fashioned way is just to go to Google and identify the central telephone number for that employer and just call the main receptionist. And either you might get asked specifically for the manager or director of the specific department you know you might be working in, uh, or maybe if you know this has to start with human resources and go through a basic recruiter, just ask to be transferred to human resources or to the talent acquisition team. And then you can leave a voicemail, which is probably what you'll do is leave a voicemail, but at least you've done that. So either through alumni connections, LinkedIn, people that you can identify, or just by contacting and getting forwarded through the main receptionist. Those would be ways that you could follow up. Okay. How do you navigate applying for a new job and providing references when your best reference is your current supervisor? And the assumption if is that you don't want your current supervisor to know that you're applying for a new job. And, and that is, that's a difficult spot to be in because if you have a good relationship basically and you know you're doing a good job, uh, then your supervisor actually could probably be an excellent reference for you. So of course the ideal situation would be that you would have enough confidence and trust in your supervisor to confide in them that you're ready for something new and that where you're working now just is not going to provide that for, for you. And so you're needing to look elsewhere for the next step in your career development. Um, and if you explain that, if they're friends and if they really um, want to help you and, and they really feel good about you, hopefully they'll do that. Short of that, then you have coworkers and colleagues. And again, that could be either contacts you have internally within your organization, or maybe you know colleagues and peers that are external to your organization. Uh, so those people might be able to act as references for you as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, two questions that I kind of want to lump together here. Uh, social media when searching for jobs. Um, do you have any recommendations for social media updates between jobs? Uh, LinkedIn would obviously uh, be the most obvious one, I suppose. Um, and on a similar note, are there certain industries or careers that LinkedIn is more or less effective for? Ah, you might have to repeat those questions. So let me tackle the first one. Um, let's talk about LinkedIn updates. Uh, if you, I think you said in between jobs, there is something in your LinkedIn profile called a headline. Most people have their current job title uh, in that portion of the LinkedIn profile. But if you're in between things or if you're in the middle of seeking, you certainly can say that. It says, and, and be clear about it, currently seeking and then spell out the name of the role. Uh, other people choose, maybe they don't want people to know that necessarily by looking at their profile, but instead of your specific job title, maybe you want to be a little broader in your headline and speak about um, the career field in which you are a professional or you would like to aspire to that profession. Uh, a really broad term. I think my profile might say something about experienced career development professional or something like that. Uh, so, or experienced finance professional, interested in. And you can do things like that within the headline of LinkedIn. Um, while I'm on social media, I do want to say if you're promoting yourself or trying to make inroads into a new employer, if you're a Twitter user, use Twitter. Uh, there are plenty of employer organizations that have their own Twitter accounts and they are themselves tweeting and some of them will allow you to converse back and forth. That actually sets you up. I've heard stories of people that have engaged with employers through their Twitter accounts uh, and that makes you look really good. They pay attention a little bit more potentially to your application too if you've been active with them on Twitter. Um, and the second half of your question was, uh, are there any particular industries or careers uh, where LinkedIn is more or less effective, um, 
some people have had uh, mediocre success, I guess, let's say. I actually think it's the other way around. From my experience, and, and remember, I am working with job seekers from all different areas. They're looking for work in typical business to nonprofit organizations and a variety of career areas from technical to social, um, basically uh, what you might call social sciences and things like that. I would say it's easier to say the industries and fields that are not engaging as much on LinkedIn. I've certainly been told the arts, <laughs> any of the performing arts necessarily are not necessarily necessarily there. I'm not sure uh, as much about visual arts. Um, some nonprofit organizations are very active on LinkedIn. Again, I would say the larger the nonprofit, the more active they would be on LinkedIn. Uh, it's taken a while, but the criminal justice area, some of our sociology majors go into criminal justice. And it, when I first started investigating, I I didn't see a ton of activity there on LinkedIn, but actually in the last year or so, I've seen more criminal justice criminal justice related groups and corrections groups there. Uh, I'm trying to think, you'd almost have to give me some very specific career fields, but it's more often than not, more industries are on LinkedIn than are not. The statistic actually is 94% of recruiters are utilizing LinkedIn. I wanna shift a little bit here uh, to education. You talked about staying current, staying up on the latest trends. Um, as far as formal education goes, uh, do you have any recommendations for those considering an MBA as a career progression plan? Uh, is there a good resource to start uh, researching on what direction to take if that's something of interest? You know, um, the MBA is a powerful um, tool and it's a powerful degree. Uh, I would say this is where I would go back to the basics in terms of my career research and identify very specific career goals. If you have identified um, especially specific employers of interest uh, and then there's a specific career field within that employer that's your job target, then the next thing is to identify and research what are the common job titles within that career field and that's where that informational interviewing and that networking potentially with other alum is really going to come in handy. And the questions when you get face to face with a live human being or on email or however you can with a mentor or alumni, whoever, once you can name your career target and name types of organizations you'd like to work for, then your question is, if this is my target, will an MBA degree be important? in order for me to be taken seriously to work in this job. And that means, is it important? Like, is it gonna be absolutely essential? Or is it preferred? Or is it, well, you know, it's a nice to have, you don't really have to have it, but sure, I suppose. Uh, but you need to get feedback directly from the people that are working within those environments that might be your target they're the ones that are going to tell you how valuable and important that MBA, MBA degree is. The next question that I get that's most common about MBAs is at what point in my career should I go back to school and especially for the MBA degree. And this I can tell you with great clarity and surety that the employers that I work with tell me that um, a job candidate is a lot more attractive, shall we say, if they have waited for a while between the completion of their bachelor's degree and when they enter an MBA degree program. In other words, a year, eh, that might be okay, but most employers are really looking for professional work experience. You are gonna be much more valuable to that employer and actually you're gonna be more valuable to the classroom setting if you've had several years of at least relevant or any kind of professional work experience under your belt before you complete that MBA degree. And the good news is certainly at St. Thomas, uh, we have so many different ways that you can complete that degree, whether it's through weekends or short-term programs or uh, maybe you decide to go full-time, maybe you decide to go part-time. There's a lot of different ways to do it, no matter where you are in your career. But employers would say, you're going to be more valuable to me if you wait. How do you balance that with other uh, graduate programs, certificates, uh, a master's degree in a uh, particular skill set? 
um, you know, how do you weigh all those options and determine uh, what might be best for you? And I, I don't, I'd say regardless of your career field, that concept of getting some work experience under your belt before you enter your graduate degree program or certificate program will actually be of more benefit to you. There are some rare exceptions, I suppose, if you know right now that you wanna be an academic and you wanna be a professor uh, and you're really sure about that and you have some very specific uh, research areas of interest, then I suppose there's no reason for you to wait and delay and moving on to a master's or, or um, doctoral program is really the way to go. That's also true in terms of the um, to psychology and in the helping professions. If you know that for sure you want to become a psychologist or a licensed social worker, maybe you don't need to wait for very long and just maybe a year or so might be enough and you want to go right on into that graduate degree program. But I'd say with other than those couple of exceptions, most employers tell me that working for a little while before you enter graduate school is really the best way to go. And mostly that's because you then know yourself better and you know what skills you really wanna develop and what you're really interested in more than anything. Because that's what a graduate degree and a graduate certificate program is gonna do. Is it's gonna help, you're gonna get drilled down expertise in something very narrow and very specific. So I say, you don't wanna waste your time and money getting to be a real specific expert if it's something you're not really sure you care about all that much. And working for a while will tell you what you want. Yeah. Okay. A um, little bit of, of a shift here. Uh, I have been at the same company since I graduated five years ago. I want to continue growing my career. I've given, been given new opportunities within this company. Uh, but do you have recommendations on when to look at new companies for the sake of adding diversity to your resume? That's completely up to you. I certainly have read articles by uh, recruiters and others who might say that uh, moving to a completely new company, a new employer, will usually bump you in salary. Uh, and, and a three to five or three to six year mark uh, is, a, is a time that's kind of common for some people. Uh, and then, so if that's your goal, if a bump up in salary is really what you want, then looking at a new employer is probably a good way to go. Uh, but again, it's really up to your own individual goals and, and your sense of satisfaction. That's a lot of what we talked about in this webinar is kind of measuring where you are in terms of satisfaction and fulfillment right now. If you find yourself getting bored or you're frustrated more of the time uh, and you're kind of griping to yourself or to others about the culture <laughs> and the way things work around here kind of a thing, then those might be certainly signs that you're ready for a new employer. Uh, or maybe you see the handwriting on the wall. If you're really, really up to date on trends in your industry, uh, you have your ear to the ground and you are paying attention to the shifts in the landscape, mergers, acquisitions, downsizing, reorganization, whatever you wanna call it. And maybe there's a reason for you to go, hmm, maybe I need to be forward looking and thinking ahead to moving on before somebody makes that decision for me. So there's lots of different reasons you might think about that. In a similar vein, how would one go about applying for uh, a position in a different department within the same company? Is experience within the field or within the company typically more desirable when comparing candidates? Uh, is experience within the field or within the company more desirable and important? That really can only be answered internally within your organization. And again, I would go back to that. Are there people that you can trust uh, that you could get to know, take out to lunch within your organization who might be working in an area you might aspire to and just kind of feel them out and get some advice from them. Uh, in some organizations that are big enough, uh, the human resources team is really, especially in, if there's a recruiting function within human resources, part of what their job is, is to help retain employees. So they should be trusted that if you want to move around within your organization, 
I would make an appointment with one of them and feel them out for what the possibilities are and what those qualifications would be. Because most organizations do not want to lose you. <laughs> it costs employers money when you quit and when you move on to a completely different employer. Uh, so if there's any way that they can retain you, they should be willing to give you some really good information about how you can best transition internally within an organization. But only they can answer that. I would definitely assume that having some directly related experience in your career, in that career field itself, would probably be of most benefit. That would make sense to me. But check. Yeah. Okay. Uh, kind of winding down here, probably have time for a couple more questions. Um, a few different questions in here uh, about resources offered uh, by St. Thomas. Uh, I know the Career Resource Center, you referred to some of those resources already, um, but if you could just talk a little bit more about those there um, and specifically uh, perhaps how to go about setting up an appointment with a career counselor. Absolutely. As I said, we have a team of career specialists in the Career Development Center um, in, in every kind of phase of life that you're wanting to talk about. Um, I have on this last slide here uh, a phone number. And right at this moment, just picking up the phone and calling that number is the best way to go. Uh, we've got a receptionist on duty. Uh, please be ready when you make that appointment to tell the receptionist what it is you're wanting to do. So if it's, I need to talk to somebody about a complete career change, or maybe it's just, I want to update my resume. It's been a long time since I've done that. Not sure what's ready to go. Or maybe you are ready to engage in a job search, but it's been a while since you've had a job search and you want to know the most effective ways. Just be ready to explain what it is you want to do at this point in your career, and also be ready to explain uh, how you want to have that appointment. Uh, so if you're in the St. Paul area, we're located in the St. Paul campus. We're in Murray Herrick Campus Center, room 123. You could also literally pop in our door and make an appointment with the receptionist. That's fine too. So if you're in the area and it's convenient for you to take a lunch hour off or maybe early morning um, before you go to work, we're happy to see you uh, like one-on-one -on -one individually. But if you can't do that, again, tell the receptionist uh, I am not able to be there physically on campus, so I'd like to do this over the phone or via Skype, uh, especially if you have a resume that needs reviewing, then ask them to give you the name of the actual career coach, that career specialist that you're being set up with, and ask them to give you a phone number to contact them. So if it's a phone appointment, you can call them or decide who's gonna call who. And the resume piece, what I was gonna suggest is, it's really helpful for us, since we can't see you personally, if you're doing this over the phone, email to that career specialist your resume in advance of the appointment, um, a Word doc or a PDF. Actually, Word doc is actually better uh, because we might might have a way to help you edit that and review it online and put in some notes and suggestions in a Word doc. So maybe sending some of those things in advance might be good too. Answer that question? Absolutely. Uh, and our last question here that I want to ask, um, you've talked a lot about staying plugged in with your own professional network, people in your organization, people you meet in the industry, uh, what have you. Um, if you have lost touch with some of those people who you realize now could be a good resource for a job change, career advice, uh, anything like that, what advice might you have for someone that you might have lost touch with and now want to get back in, in contact with? Um, is it ever too late <laughs> to try to um, rekindle those professional relationships? I don't think so. I've certainly had people call me or, or reach out to me that way. Um, it, there's a couple levels there. So do you have their contact information? I mean, if it's been a really long time, you may literally not know how to get in touch with them. So again, LinkedIn is your best friend to try to identify where they're currently working. Uh, and if you don't have access to their direct email address, then certainly messaging them through LinkedIn would be the first way to go to connect with them. Obviously, if you have a phone number, I don't know, I personally think the phone is a good old fashioned way to go. And the reason why I really prefer the phone, if you can get a phone number, is they can hear you, right? It, most likely you're probably gonna be leaving a voicemail message anyway, um, but hearing your tone of voice is more like having you right there, right next to them. And you can kind of explain in a casual conversational tone 
hi, I'm sorry, we've lost touch. Um, I, and maybe you need to remind them of how they know you and, and where you connected, I don't know, but you might want to do that. Uh, and just be honest, be blatantly honest. Uh, you are working for or you're working in a field that uh, I haven't been in for a while, but I'd really like to explore maybe re-entering that area. And I think you might be able to provide me with some valuable information and advice. I was just wondering if you might be willing to meet with me over coffee or just have a phone conversation with me. I'd love to reconnect. It can be pretty simple. All right, well, excellent. Thank you so much, Jennifer. There's so much great information uh, that you've shared with everyone today. Uh, I hope all our participants had got something useful out of this and uh, we'll return another time for one of our uh, future St. Thomas uh, alumni webinars.